Welcome to my tutorial 15. It's titled Basic Bounce or Ricochet Game. We'll start by opening the tutorial 14, which was the Basic Bounce. Open up your Actions panel by selecting the first frame in the Actions panel. And I want to change the starting position of our ball from 100 down to 50. Close your panel. Back on scene one. Open a new symbol. Call it angle indicator. A N G capital A capital I N D underscore M C pick up your rectangle tool keep the black stroke and pick up a fill color of your choice and make a rectangle like that. I'm on a hundred percent scale and that's probably two centimeters. Go back to scene one. Select your buttons layer. Make sure all the other layers are locked. Insert a layer. Call it angle indicator. Select the first frame. Go down to about 50% on your stage and drag that indicator at this point in time on the stage and put it right where that, I'm putting it right here, where the, in my case, where that button is. I'm going to be moving the button. Pick up this instance name, copy it, paste it here. And at this time, I'm going to just move that button. This may or may not be something you have to do. I'm going to put that button over here, and there's my indicator there. I'm going to now open my Actions panel so we can write some code on that indicator. It's a movie clip, so we'll keep it with our movie clips up in our variables. I'm going to right click at the end of my wall, movie clip variable, and I'm going to type in this information variable, angle indicator, capital A, capital I, underscore MC for movie clip, colon, movie clip, capital M, capital C, that's in blue, and my semicolon. We're now going to write some code on this indicator, and what we want to be able to do is set the angle using the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys. We want to do that before the start button is pressed. So we want to do that when this ball released variable is still a zero. So select right there after that open curly bracket on this on enter frame line. And in here type this code. And it says, I'm just going to open my panels up so we can go through it. It's in the on enter frame function area, so it's happening over and over again. And the first part of it is an if statement if bracket ball released equal equals zero close bracket, open curly bracket, and way down here, that's the close curly bracket for this one. The on enter frame is way down at the bottom of the page almost. So this will be a zero before the start button is pressed. After this open curly bracket, we're starting another if statement. If two 
open brackets this time. If key is down, capital K, period between the key and is, small i for is, capital D for down, open bracket, key down with a period between them, capital K, capital D, and a close bracket, that close brackets for this section, then two and signs. This is the Boolean and function, meaning two things have to take place before this information is going to be allowed to be done. Open bracket, this is the second part of our and. Ball speed, B-A-L-L-Y, the ball Y, capital S-P-E-E-D, that's this ball speed up here. And these parameters I figured out give me a range that works on our, our stage. So ball speed, if it's greater than or equal to 2.3, that's the greater than, equal to, so it's got to be equal to 2.3 or greater than, three closed brackets and open curly bracket. So this will take place and we'll be able to use the down arrow to change things. Okay, so come here. We'll be able to change this till we get to this amount, 2.3. Can't go any lower than that. And what are we working on? We're going to take the ball speed and decrement it by 0.1. Decrement minus equal signs 0.1 and a colon. We're going to do that with the down key. And also that new angle box we made, that angle indicator, movie clip, period, underscore, height. You know this is spelt right because it's turned blue. We're going to make that smaller. We're going to decrement that. Minus equals 4, colon. And we're just going to trace it to help us see if this is working should we need it. If we're going to make the box and the speed smaller with the down key, we're going to make it go up with the up key. So after this speed trace, colon, there's my closed curly bracket, and then my second if. This is almost identical to this one, except here it's less than equals to 6, so we can't go above 6. So our range is going to be 2.3 to 6. And here we're going to increment the y speed plus equals by 0.1. And here we're going to increment that angle indicator by plus equals 4. And there's my colon. And again, we're just going to trace that and uh, here's my closed bracket, so there's two closed brackets here. Having these speeds now controlled by the setting of these arrows, we got to go up here and remove these two lines. We don't need these two speeds here anymore, so we can just delete them. We don't need them. And let's just do a format, clean it up a little bit. And to make our angles correspond to our stage, we got to change these two values up here, so the ball speed x will be set that to 5, and the ball y speed will set that to 4.2. We want to go down to where we hit wall 2, right here, and we want to be able to, when we hit that wall, to make sure that the speed of the Y is reversed. If not, and we just did a second shot on the ball, it would take up the wrong angle. So write in ball Y speed equals ball Y speed times minus 1. That just makes it a negative number so the ball can go back to where it was. Now this ball release when the button is pushed becomes a 1. 
So we want to encompass this inside of this ball release one. All this stuff with these walls now. So take this curly bracket here and remove it. Just cut it and put it down here. Paste. I just did a format. Let's test this out and just see if we got control on this. There's all the way down with my arrow key. There's all the way up with my up key. So we have control with this. Mine is 2.3 here. That's the minimum I'll have. And the maximum is going to be based on this 6.09. Let's go back to scene one. Open a new symbol. It's the targets. T-A-R-G, capital T, underscore M-C. Select frame one. Pick up my rectangle tool. Black stroke, yellow fill. And make a target. Go back to scene one. Select on the angles indicator layer. Insert a layer. Call it targ. T-A-R-G. Target. Make sure all the layers are locked except that layer. Select frame one. And grab one of these. Make your scene around 25%. Grab one of these targets, put it high up there. Grab another one, put it down here. And grab a third one and put it there. Select this one first. Selection tool if you need to. Select that one. Copy the instance name here. Paste it. And put this tar1 underscore MC. Select the next one. You still have the paste. Paste it. Tar 2 MC. Select this one. Paste it. Tar 3 MC. So I have those all instance names. Now we can write some script on them. Open your actions panel. And I like to, when I remember, is to put in the variables. So I've added these three variables. Target 1 underscore MC, target 2 underscore MC, and target 3 underscore MC. Come down here below the, where we hit the wall 2. This bracket here, close bracket, belongs with this if. So put your cursor after that bracket and type in the information that is the if hit for target one. It says if bracket ball underscore movie clip MC period hit test target one by now that format is 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 probably stuck in our heads. I'm doing a trace statement that says hit one and we want to do a few things when we hit this target similar to when we hit the wall. We want to make the movie clip for the ball invisible with the ball to disappear. We want to make the movie clip put the start button to come back so we can use it again. We want to reverse the direction of the y-axis so we can shoot another ball that goes down and not up. And we want to be able to not go right into that this function loop here. Until the start button is pushed, the same reason as this one, and 
we want to make the target we just hit disappear. So let's give this a try. And that's target one there. It's relatively high on the stage, so I think I have to go up with my angle button. I just push the arrow up, hit the ball. The ball's going to hit way back here. And if I hit this, that worked. And I'm just going to do it again and see if this works. I kept the same the same height here on my angle. And now this should, so that's working the way we want it to. We want to put the same information for the next two targets. So after this curly bracket, which belongs to this if statement, click on it and insert these two if statements. This is going to be hit two. And this is going to be hit three. You could have copied you could have just as easily copied this and pasted it and copied it and pasted it whichever way you find easier and as long as if you're copying and pasting you make sure that this becomes target 2 and this becomes tar 3. Let's go back to scene 1 and I'd like to do something to put like a, a, a gradient on this on this indicator. So select the indicator layer, insert a layer and call it text, the text layer, and let's make it a little bigger so we can see it. Now I gotta find it. There it is. And I'm going to start by selecting this first frame of this text layer, my line tool, and I'm going to make a line as long as it's a little bit longer than this. There's a line. I'm going to click on it, right click, copy it. I'm going to paste it in place, drag it down. Paste it in place, drag it down. I'm going to make 10 of these. I have 10 of them, I believe. I'm going to pick up my selection tool and highlight them. I'm coming over here to my alignment panel. I'm going to click on the horizontal alignment, puts them all horizontally in line, and down here to distribute, that gives them even spaces between them. I'm going to drag this over on top of my right on top of my indicator and tab it up. I have to tab it up to get it centered on that. And that's pretty good for me right there. I got a one and a half spaces on the bottom and one and a half spaces on top, roughly. Okay, let's just give this a quick try and see how much adjustment we have to do. I'm using my arrow key up and I got to at least expand them so that this is up in here, not too much. I'm going to do that by grabbing my free transform tool and I'm going to just lift this straight up. Now I got to recenter it. So select them all again and tab it down. I have roughly a little, almost two. Let's test this. I'm going with that. That's good for me. And I want to just put some text on here to say max. I'm grabbing my text tool right here 
in red static text I'm writing max I'm going to put it under here I'm going to copy it and paste it and put it up there and I'm going to put them in over here okay let's give this one more try pass my movie out they go down to a minimum not quite centered go up to a maximum I'm all right with that let's shoot the ball we should get this target up here and let's put it down around here and we might pick this target up be a bit low we're a bit low so we'll just get another shot we gotta go up a little bit you can put as many targets as you want in the tutorial next tutorial I'll do the same thing with some moving targets I'll just continue from here with I'll continue on from here and I'll have a moving target didn't disappear so we might have been under it he must have hit the blue the ball must have right here because it's actually a squared it might have hit here first there the last thing you want to do is go back through your code and and remove all your traces if you look at my tutorials 3 redo and 4 redo they'll tell you how to keep score and you could work that into your action script so you can tally up a score if you wish I hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope you use what you learn